Hello. I am going to embark on another reading out loud thing. At least I think I am. I'm going to test that out in this. I am going to do Travels in West Africa by Mary Henrietta Kingsley, a uh, English ethnographer, scientific writer, and explorer whose travels through, throughout Western Africa and resulting work helped shape Europeans' perceptions of both African cultures and British colonialism in Africa. Uh, she was born uh, in London uh, in 1862, uh, died in 1900. In 1900. Um, so she was, uh, her father was a physician who worked uh, for the Earl of Pembroke. Uh, he collected information on kind of uh, for his sort of ethnographic studies that never really became anything, but it was sort of a motivating factor of when uh, her father and then I think about a couple of months later, her, her mother died. She got an inheritance and decided, ah, I am free from family obligations and uh, decided to go off and um, go off and and. Uh, um, go to Africa. Um, so, so she did, so she did, um, landing in Sierra Leone in, uh, August of 1893. Uh, she wrote, uh, she wrote a couple of books, uh, the most notable of which, and which is the most kind of the popular one, is this Travels in West Africa. Um, you know, it's one of these kind of complicated things. She was seen at the time as a new woman and kind of alarming as that, a, a, an unaccompanied woman uh, traveling around Africa, uh, she, though she rejected, you know, the label of being a feminist. Uh, she was seen as she had gotten trouble with missionaries because criticizing that uh, being and maybe perhaps anti-imperialist. Though I'm sure also looking at it from our, po our modern point of view, there seems to be a lot of stuff of she also thought that, ah, the civilizing influence, the help of uh, the, Br the British Britain and other Western countries was needed by Africa, which I think would not, not fly again, would not fly today. So yes, Travels in West Africa, published in 1897, I guess three years before her, before her, um, her uh, death. Uh, was a great was definitely an, a bestseller uh it seems to have been and it seems it's gotten a lot of like kind of really good stories in it dry wit all that sort of stuff so it kind of recommends itself to like okay maybe this is a work i want to uh spend some time with here is let me just read the introduction a little bit of the introduction here just to for me to get a sense of how she sounds what her writing is like whether i can stand uh reading it um, or, you know, basically if I'm up to reading it. So introduction. Relateth the various causes which impelled the author to embark, embark upon the voyage. It was in 1893 that, for the first time in my life, I found myself in possession of five or six months which were not heavily forestalled, and, feeling like a boy with a new half-crown, I lay about in my mind, as Mr. Bunyan would say, as to what to do with them. Go and learn your tropics, said science. Where on earth am I to go? I wondered, for tropics or tropics, wherever found. So I got down an atlas and saw that either South America or South Africa must be my destination. For the Mal Malayan region was too far off and too expensive. Then I got Wallace's geographical distribution, and after reading that master's article on the Ethiopian region, I hardened my heart and closed with West, Af West Africa. I did this more readily because I knew, because while I knew nothing of the practical condition of it, I knew a good deal both by tradition and report of Southeast America, and remembered that Yellow Jack was an endemic, and that a certain naturalist, my superior physically and mentally, had come very near to getting starved to death in the depressing society of an expedition slowly perishing of want and miscellaneous fevers up to up to Parma Par, Parana. My ignorance regarding West Africa was soon removed, and all the vast cavity in my mind that occupied that it occupied is not even yet half filled up. There is a great deal of very curious information in its place. I use the word curious advisedly, for I think many seem to translate my request for practical hints and advice into an advertisement that rubbish may be shot here. This same information is 
is in a state of great confusion still, although I have made heroic efforts to codify it. I find, however, that it can almost all be got in under the following different headings, namely, and to wit, the dangers of West Africa, the disagreeables of West Africa, the diseases of West Africa, the things you must take to West Africa, the things you find most handy in West Africa, the worst possible things you can do in West Africa. I inquired in all of my friends, as, as a beginning, what they knew of West Africa. The majority knew nothing. A percentage said, oh, you can't possibly go there. That's where Sierra Leone is, the white man's grave, you know. And if they were pressed further, one occasionally found that they had relations who had gone out there after having been sad trials, but on consideration of their having not only left Le not ha their having left not only West Africa, but this world, were now forgiven and forgotten. I next turned my attention to cross-examining the doctors. Deadliest spot on earth, they said cheerfully, and showed me maps of the geographical distribution of diseases. Now, I do not say that a country looks inviting when it is colored in Seely's green or a bilious yellow, but these colors may arise from lack of artistic gift in the cartographer. There is no mistaking what he means by black, however, and black you'll find they color West Africa, from above Sierra Leone to below, below the Congo. I wouldn't go there if I were you, said my medical friends. You'll catch something, but if you must go, and you're as obstinate as a mule, just bring me. And then they then followed a list of commissions from here to New York, any one of which, but I only found that out afterwards. So that's the beginning of the the introduction. I am curious if I can go to, because one of the things that uh, Sean the Book Maniac and others would do was say, okay, um, get 121 pages into a work. Uh, I don't know how I can do that. So what I'm going to do is uh, I am going to go to chapter five, the rapids of the rapids of the Ogwe, and I'm um, yeah, I'm just gonna go. The Ogwe is abroad at the Nij the Ogwe is broad at the Nijol, and its banks not mountainous as the Toluga, but as we go on, soon narrows. The currents run runs more rapidly than ever, and we are soon again surrounded by the mountain range. Great masses of black rock show among the trees on the hillsides, and under the fringe of fallen trees that hang from steep banks. Two hours after leaving Jol, we're facing our first rapid. Great gray black masses of smooth rock rise up out of the whirling water in all directions. These rocks have a peculiar appearance which puzzle me at the time, but in a subsequent getting used to it, I accepted it quietly and admired. When the sun shines on them, they have a soft light blue haze round them, like a halo. The effect produced by this, with the forested hillsides and the little beaches of glistening white sand, was one of the most perfect things I have ever seen. We kept along close to the right-hand bank, dodging out of the way of the swiftest current as much as possible. Ever and again we were unable to force our way round projecting parts of the bank, so we then got up just as far as we could to the point in question, yelling and shouting at the top of our voices. Mbo said, Jump for the bank, sir! And I up and jumped, followed by half the crew. Such banks, sheets and walls and rubbish heaps of rock, mixed with trees and fallen and standing. One appalling corner I shall not forget, for I had to jump up jump at a rock wall and hang on to it in a manner more befitting an insect than an insect hunter, and then scramble up it into a fo close-set forest, heavily burdened with boulders of all sizes. I wondered whether the rocks or trees were there first. There is evidence both ways, for in one place you will see a rock on the top of a tree, the tree creeping out from underneath it, and in another place you will see a tree on top of the rock clasping it with a network of roots and getting its nourishment. Goodness knows how, for these are by no means tender, digestible sandstones, but uncommon hard ganesse and quartz, which had no idea of breaking up into friable small stuff, which only takes on a high polish when it is vigorously sanded and canvassed by the ogwe. 
While I was engaged in climbing across these promontories, the crew would be busy shouting and hauling the canoe round the point by means of the strong chain provided for such emergencies fixed on to, fixed on to the bow. When this was done, if in we got again and paddled away until we met our next affliction. So yeah, that is not a bad little sample there of the of 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 the of a working author uh doing kind of a really sprightly little dis description of making her way through the con the countryside which is i'm assuming what the majority of this book is is like and is fairly appealing so i think i will i will take this up and uh give it a try give it a try so uh this is this is sort of my a little bit of an introduction to the work uh, I'm going to probably more closely read the Wikipedia page uh, and uh, go from there. Go from there. Yeah. All right. More videos later.